Hello everybody, my name is uh, Christophe Trollet from NNCS uh, Company and today I'm going to talk about the BCA. BCA, a new dynamic conditional access based on the BIS technology to protect your contribution against hacking, against pirate. As you know, hacking can cost you lots of money, it can be a big lack of revenue, so it could be interesting for you to improve your robustness against this kind of attack. A few words about the history, just to provide you an overview of the BIS technology before we are diving into a deeper technical description. Most of you know very well the BIS, especially people working in the SNG contribution, as it is commonly used in this domain. It is a standard method to protect your content, this method has been standardized in 2002 with three modes. Mode 0, which means in fact no scrambling. Mode 1, the content is scrambled with a CSA algorithm, with a fix and clear key, which is exchanged between the transmitter and the receiver. Mode E, the content, like in mode 1, is scrummed with a fixed key, but uh, the key is encrypted to be exchanged between the transmitter, between the uplinker and the receiver, using DES algorithm. That's the version 1 of the base encryption used since roughly 20 years now. This standard has been updated in 2018 with a new ingredients, more powerful algorithm, that's the version B of the BIS standard. CISA for the scrambling and AES for the key encryption. Like BIS1 or BIS version 1, it comes with mod 0, mod 1, mod 2. But a fourth mode has been added, which is called CA. CA for conditional access has been added. This fourth mode takes benefit of the new ingredients, which are more robust than in version 1, and with scrambling keys, which are periodically modified. That's definitely much more robust. And in addition, this fourth mode offers the possibility to add or remove a receiver during the contribution, during the event production, without any perturbation. That's much more flexible too. Very important, the BIS version 1 and BIS version 2 are not compatible. It means if you are using version 1 of the BIS on one side of the system, you have to use the version 1 on the other side of the system. And of course, if you are using version 2 on one side, you have to use the version 2 on the other side too. It must be the same version of the BIS on both sides. How it is working on the field, especially in the DSNG contribution, in the satellite contribution. Here you've got a, a simplified but typical DSNG system architecture. You've got the video camera, which is taking the picture of the event. You've got the encoder, which is making the video compression, MPEG-2, MPEG-4, and so on. It provides the compressed video to, as a transfer stream over ASI or over IP to the satellite moderator for the satellite transmission. On the receiver side, usually people are using compact solution called IRDs, IRDs for Integrated Receiver Decoder, composed of a satellite demodulator and an audio and video decoder. That's, let's say, a, a system unprotected against hacking against pirates. To protect your content using this technology, in the transmission chain at the transfer stream level, between the encoding feature and the modulation feature. It can be inside the encoder, but in fact, let's take the example of the feature inside the modulator. You insert the BIS block to scramble your content. In the reception side, same block has to be inserted at the transport suite level before the decoding stage. Using BIS, in fact, BIS version 1.1, the BIS block is like this. It receives the transfer stream content from the encoder. CSA scrambling process is controlled by a clear key, which is entered 
into the, the modulator and it delivers the scrambled TS to the modulation process. Same on the receiver side, you are entering the same key which is used to descrumble the TS before the decoding. The key is, it, is exchanged between the transmitter and the receiver out of band, meaning through SMS, voicemail or any way of communication. The key itself is not protected. That's exactly the same functional block diagram in version 2, mod 1, except that the CSA block is replaced by the CISA block. And it is a 64-byte key in version 2, while it is a shorter key in version 1. People on the field have access to the key as it is exchanged in mod 1 as an unencrypted data information. Using mod E, there are two stages inside the BIS block, one more than in mod 1. Because the key, called the session word, used to control the encryption process, CSA in version 1, CISA in version 2, and which is exchanged between the transmitter and the receiver, is encrypted. So this encrypted key must be decrypted inside the device before controlling the scrambling block. With this mod, mod E, at the system level, the manager of the system, using the identifier of the receiver, is generating the encrypted key. Then, the manager is providing to the transmitter the encrypted key and the identifier of the ERD used, or the ERD that we want to address. Thus, the BIS block inside the transmitter use these two information to recover the key that has to be applied to the CSA block. The system manager is also providing the encrypted key to the receiver, and the receiver is using this encrypted key and its own internal uh, identifier to decrypt the key and recover the session word to apply to the scrambling block. That's the same block diagram in version 1 and in version 2, except that DES in version 1 is replaced by AES in version 2, and CSA block in version 1 is replaced by CISA block in version 2. And the length of the key used in version 2 is a little bit longer. Like in mod 1, the key is exchanged out of band between the receiver and the receiver through SMS, voicemail, and, and so on. But with the mod E, nobody on the field has access to the clear key. The key is encrypted for the exchange between the transmitter and the receiver. The new mode of BIS, introduced in version 2 of the BIS, is the CA mode. CA stands for conditional access. That's a dynamic system with in-band exchange of the key between the transmitter and the receiver. So it means nobody has access to the key used by the system. The system is based on a first key, which is used by the CISA block to encrypt the transfer stream, called the session word. This key is randomly defined by the system itself and change every x second. The period is adjustable and defined by the user. This session word is sent to the receiver inside the transport stream through what we call the ECM table. But it is not sent as a clear information, it is sent as an AES128 encrypted information. The key used by AES128 encryption block to encrypt this session word is called the session key. Like the session word, this session key is randomly defined by the system itself and changed every X second period, which is configurable by the user. The session key is also sent to the receiver inside the transport stream through what we call the EMM table. Like the session word, the session key is not sent as a clear information inside the EMM table. It is sent as an encrypted information. 
But the method used to encrypt the session key is an asymmetric method. It is based on an asymmetric cipher. For that, each receiver has two keys, a private key, an internal key, and a key that can't be read, it is inside the receiver, and a public key, which can be read and which can be communicated. The public key of each receiver is used by the RSA block to encrypt the session word for each receiver. Even if in the system there is one session key, there are as many encrypted session keys as receiver. One encrypted session key per receiver, which is transmitted to the receiver through the EMM table. So the EMM table can be big if you are managing a big number of receivers of IRDs. On the receiver side, thanks to the EMM table and its internal private key, each receiver can recover the session key. And with this session key and the encrypted session word, which is inside the ECM table, the receiver can recover the session word to use to decrypt the transfer stream. In conclusion, inside this system, nobody has access to the key used by the encryption process. And furthermore, they are randomly set by the system. So nobody has access to the encryption keys, and these encryption keys are changed every hexagon. And inside your system, if you are removing the public key of an IRD, automatically this receiver will lose the session key and the session word. So this receiver will lose its capacity to decrypt the transfer stream. And on the opposite side, if you are adding a, the public key of an IRD, this receiver could, in real time, from the EMM table and the ECM table, extract the key, session key and session word, and then decode the transfer stream. To finish this presentation and just show you how BCA can be used, here is the example of the contribution network from EBU. Every receiver, every IRD of members have been updated with the BCA, so each receiver now has a private key and a public key for the BCA process. Everybody has provided the public key of his receiver to the organization. Thus, the organization has a database of public key. And for each event, they are providing to the uplinker, to the transmitter, the list of the public keys allowed to receive the content. This list of public key is loaded to the BCA block that I showed you a few minutes ago which is generating the EMM table and the ECM table for the receiver. I hope you have enjoyed this video. In any case, if you have any question, do not hesitate. We will be happy to help you. And do not miss our second video about the BCA implementation in Viper, our satellite modulator, which is used by many of you. Thank you. Bye.